What's up y'all, Shuffle. In this video for Darkest Dungeon 2, we're gonna learn how to play Grave Robber. So as in all the guys that I do, I'll talk about her strengths, her weaknesses, how to play her, I'll explain what the skills and paths and trinkets do, as well as some teammates that work with her to get you started. First, let's talk about strengths. What is Grave Robber good at? She has a ton of self-sustain through two of her heals, as well as the ability to move around to get out of attack range and dodge plus stealth, there are a lot of ways for her to defend herself. Her second big strength is her reach. It's very hard for her to be out of position and she can usually hit a lot of things no matter where she's at in the party. Her third strength is that she is a mobile character. She doesn't have to be. You don't have to build a dance team around her, but if the unforeseen happens, like the random shuffle or the push pull, whatever happens, she isn't really affected by it. She can actually get herself back in a position, which also helps fix your team. Next up are weaknesses. What is Audrey bad at? She has low HP. She has one of the lowest in the game. Her damage is balanced around crits. This is pretty unfortunate because a lot of her damage doesn't top out too high, but she gets crit through combo on a lot of her attacks or things like lunge have a high crit rate. So her damage is basically balanced around her hitting crits most of the time. Her final major weakness is that she desperately wants mastery. Since her damage is a bit lower across the board because she's balanced around getting critical hits, she wants that mastery not only to bump up her crit rates, but also to just increase the damage floor that she has so she can hit just a little bit harder and close out kills. Next is how do we play Grave Robber? The easiest way to approach it that I do anyway is I usually pick a damage skill that I'm gonna focus on. Usually it starts, but if you wanna do a Night Sworn build, you're gonna pick Lunge and maybe Pirouette or Shadow Fade, or you can run Pick to the Face as a solo damage move, that's pretty good, or Flashing Daggers if you're Venom Drop. Usually you have one move that you're gonna focus on as the one you press all of the time, and then you pick one other move, maybe two, in order to cover up her range weakness on her primary move. And then finally, you slap some kind of support or self-heal move on her. Once you figured out what move you wanna lean on and where she's gonna be in the party, then you build the rest of the team around it. And since she can be pretty flexible, usually team building's not too hard to do with her. The final point that I did cover a bit at the start of this section is that you usually should have on one self-heal just in case. She doesn't need five attacks at all times, so it's usually good to have something like Absinthe or Dead of Night or even Shadow Fade or Pirouette, just some way for her to defend herself if she needs to. Now it's time to talk about Grey Robber's skills and her paths. And she's not the most complex character, thankfully, it's more the team building that's difficult for her sometimes if you do like dance stuff. But pick to the face, you know, bonus damage or bonus combo against or bonus crit against combo and ignores block. This also removes block when it hits them, so that's pretty nice. And it, it's actually a solid move, <clears throat> all things considered. It's just that darts is usually better, but this is actually a really good move. Throne Dagger is interesting because it got buffed a little bit, the damage came up, and that's been good. The issues with this move is that ignoring guard isn't like a huge deal. There are only a couple enemies that guard, so it's not really critical to get past it. The 50% crit is not guaranteed crit, so you saw like 80% chance. You only have 80% chance of critting. And going into stealth and then ignoring dodge, you know, you have to set up into it unless you have shimmering powder. And that can be... It, it can be good, but a lot of the times it might also be better just to 50-50 like your poison darts and then follow up from there. So this move's okay, but it's definitely overshadowed by her other stuff. Flashing Daggers is really not good. It's, on, it's okay on Deadeye and it's the main thing on Venom Drop, but outside of like token removal, you're not running this. And then we come to Poison Darts, which is her most consistent damage move. You can get the Blight to go through each time, you know, it's like 14 plus damage when mastered. This can crit and do up to 20 something, like 26, 29 damage, which is really good. And so this thing is really your go-to option. She starts with it, should be your first mastery point, unless you're running a lunge build. 
and you just hit this every single turn of every fight. That's why she is jokingly referred to as Darts Bot. Absinthe, really good self heal. Good dodge and speed. It's worth the mastery point for sure. Dead of Night, this is good not just to heal, but also to control corpses. This is really important in a couple areas like the Fetter. So, and Creature Dents. And so controlling those corpses is good. And there's no threshold for the heal, so it's pretty good. Glenn the Dark got buffed. It's got some weird melee targeting, because it feels like it should be a melee move, but it's not. So Deadeye Glint is really strong in terms of the damage. And as things change with Deathblow Resist and stuff like Stygian and whatever, being able to just ignore it or pierce it becomes better. And so this is a really good move. If you go Deadeye, you can use this in rank one as an option, so you don't have to pirouette. And that makes this move very good, so good damage, good versatility, DBR piercing. It's really good now. Lunge, if you are, if you want to run this type of team, then Lunge is a pretty good damage move. You want to upgrade it immediately too, because it really needs that mastery point to start excelling. Because the goal with this thing is, since she's so fast, you press it on turn one, and you gank whatever's in like rank two or three that's squishy. So you don't want to hit anything that can survive it. You want to make sure that this has the best chance of killing something turn one. And then you can reset from there. But the goal is to kill something immediately with this. But it's solid. It's much better after the buff. Pirouette is actually pretty good. Its main issue though is that sometimes... It has bad matchups, so when you go to the the Tangle, for instance, if you open with it, then you know two foot soldiers can block it, or you can hit a size two enemy like Knight or Ghoul, wherever they may be. And sometimes there's dodge and whatever, so it may feel like its effectiveness gets cut. But otherwise, the damage is really nice, and she goes all the way back to four, which can be helpful. And then you get one thing at dodge, which is, you know, good. It's always good to have more defensive stuff. I don't like to open with this unless the team is really designed for it. I'd much rather lunge and then pirouette after just because of um, the days and stuff like that. But it's still, it's a good move. Rep RT is actually a very good move. It's just getting to stealth quick enough to make use of it is a bit difficult. So you shadow fade on turn one, then you can rep RT turn two, which is fine. But like you're not killing anything. You know, other tanks can just taunt immediately and you don't have to set it up by doing stuff. And if you're on Shimmering Powder, that's like your best way into it. As far as using Dead of Night to get into Rep RT, it's... Like, it's usable, but this is... You know, turn one, you attack. Turn two, something is dead, so you use Dead of Night. Then turn three, you Rep RT. And you kind of lock down whatever's left. But this really needs the mastery, and it's not too good without Shimmering Powder. The move is good, getting to stealth quick enough is not good. And we have Shadow Fade. Doesn't really need the upgrade point, honestly. Uh, the speed token's kind of whatever. It's nice to counter some stuff or make sure you go first, but really she's fast enough. So Shadow Fade gives you two stealth, and that's the benefit of it. And then it's time to talk about paths. <clears throat> so with... Deadeye this is my favorite outfit for her. And Deadeye has a whole bunch of text, but what it's doing is it upgrades your range damage by, I believe, 25% and your range crit by 5%. So that's why all the range moves are listed. And then your melee skills get less damage. So as we see here, Pick to the face, which is normally, I think, 4 to 7, then 4 to 10, is now 4 to 5, and then 4 to 8. So the damage comes down on these bits, but you're not using them anyway. And what's interesting, too, is with Deadeye, it buffs a lot of stuff like flashing, thrown dagger, pirouette, and stuff like that. But the best moves for Deadeye are actually poison darts and glints, because poison darts likes the bonus crit for the blight to go through and also have higher blight duration plus the damage isn't that far off from throne dagger it's just more the defense penetration and then glint goes from can't remember what the oh actually it shows us i don't have to do the math so yeah it becomes like five to seven then seven to ten this actually hits respectably hard so i really like it 
And with Deadeye, if you run Glints, you know, you probably run a build like these five, and then you put her in three. But she's flexible. You can put her in two, you can put her in four and take off Glint if you want to. You could, you really could open with Pirouette. You don't have to, but you know, that's a thing. So you probably take off Glint because you're going to go into four. And then you Pirouette on turn one. And then after that, you start like chucking darts and stuff. So it's, it's not bad. But for the other paths, yeah, um, that's what I should say. You, you're just focusing on range damage and always keep at least one of these two on, these two heals, just so you stay alive. Yeah, so next path, Venom Drop. This is your, yeah, this is your flashing dagger spam thing. So you, it doesn't show everything in here, but what it is is you lower your speed by a little bit, which is kind of upsetting for a damage over time path because you want to go fast to make sure you get it out before the enemy goes. But because of the minus speed, you're always a turn behind when you're applying uh, damage over time. Jester has the same problem with Soloist. But you get um, less range damage, and then you get bonus blight and stealth. It doesn't say that you get less range damage and stuff like that. But what ends up happening is when you move around, for instance, you get the res piercing. So any move that moves her, so shadow fade, and lunge and pirouette all give her the ability to penetrate blight resistance and poison darts isn't as useful it's still not bad but it's not as useful for uh this but it's still good to keep on and then you have flashing daggers you're pretty much spamming this the whole time to just pump out really good cleave damage this is it's pretty nice it's a good alternative to poison darts you just need something that can hit four and then hit one on your team or you could use you know poison darts yourself i don't like to open with pirouette on this build because she's already slow enough and so you're guaranteeing you go last before you can use flashing daggers to establish blight so i honestly don't like this that much however i do like shadow fade if you need to do something you don't have to use the movement stuff i guess that's what i'm trying to get at because you can just spam flashing every turn you don't really need all the other stuff like the bonus damage and stealth, the res piercing and stuff like that. But if you want to, it's there. So I would suggest Shadow Fade in that case if you need a movement skill to go into flashing daggers. But otherwise, this Grave Robber is independent. You just drop her in usually rank four. You can do three or if you start with Shadow Fade, you can put her up here. But the reason is if you find Foreclosure Notice, which is actually good with Venom Drop, then you want her in four. So you kind of assume that might happen and finally we have night sworn this is my favorite path she has and night sworn is your dance path so if you're in stealth you do bonus damage you lose max hp which does suck because she's already squishy and then lunge and pirouette i believe you get 25 percent or 50 percent bonus damage but um yeah i think it's 25 so lunge hitting pretty hard uh pirouette hitting pretty hard too and so with Night Sworn, this is more of a team building thing. And again, the reason I don't like the pirouette opener is because you daze yourself right away. So I would almost always recommend opening with Lunge in this build. You could open with Shadow Fade to get the bonus damage and stuff, but really Lunge is the better opener just because it's more um, proactive. You're trying to kill something immediately instead of most likely killing something on turn three or turn two, I should say. And so with a team like this, what's important is the people around her. If you're going to run Night Sworn, because you want to make sure that the team can not only adjust to her moving, but also help her fix herself so she can get multiple lunges or whatever skill you're trying to lean on uh, to get them out more often. And so, for instance, you'd run something like this. The builds don't really matter. But for, you know, your turn one, hopefully this was a little harder to pull off, honestly, because he's he's kind of fast, too. But if you're on like man at arms, right? So you lunge on turn one and she goes up to two and that pushes your team like this. And then man at arms can use rampart or hold the line and move in front of her. And then turn two, you can lunge again. And so that's how you try and set your teams up to get multiple lunges because that's the most consistent damage output. 
And the way to think about it too is these dance moves, they are balanced around the fact that it's difficult to get more than one of them off consecutively. So if you get the trophy that immobilizes your whole team, or if you run a team that has a lot of forward movement, then you can lunge repeatedly, and that's when you get your best results. But if you want to move back, you have to decide if you can use Pirouette or Shadow Fade. I've actually ran this, this setup before without using Pirouette, even though it's like a boosted skill, because there is one other thing that's pretty interesting with Night Sworn, is since you get the bonus damage in Stealth, that helps increase stuff like Glint and Pick. So you could actually use Night Sworn as a Stealth and Spam Pick path, you know, if you really wanted to. So there's a lot of options for it, which is, is really cool. So, like I said, the hardest thing with that one is team building, but those are some ideas of how you would do it. And so just to recap, if you run Deadeye, you want to upgrade your main damage move first. So it's either Darts or Throne Dagger or Glint. Glint's really good to upgrade first too. If you run, what is it, Venom Drop, then you want to upgrade Flashing Daggers first. Then if you run Night Sworn, you want to upgrade Lunge first and then Pirouette, if you're going to run it, upgrade that shortly after probably like region two so that's it for paths now we'll head on to trinkets next we'll talk about grave robbers trinkets and we'll start off with the class ones so foreclosure notice is okay this is pretty much a venom drop trinket because that's one where you're going to be hitting flashing daggers a lot you can still use this with dead eye but it's not as good i feel like so if you run venom drop and you find this that's usually when it's good Otherwise, the no stealth healing penalty is really steep, so I almost never run this. I mean, it, it's it's decent if you have it and have like a guard or something to protect her, but otherwise, not usually worth it in my experience. His rings, however, definitely the best trinket of the three because poison darts is her most consistent, probably best damage move, and this gives you more poison dart damage and you're not going to be in rank one if you have that so it's just good pure upside stiff drink this one's interesting because she gets speed from shadow fade and what you call it um absinthe and the speed getting converted to days actually isn't that big of a deal because you know, if you Shadow Fade and not all of your stealth gets converted to crits, then you're dazed, but you're in stealth, so you're safe. You use Absinthe, you have a bunch of dodge tokens, so if you're dazed, you're still safe. And that's that's okay. But the pick to the face damage, no joke, is probably the best reason to run this. Like, you could try and get the other tokens to convert and do stuff like that, but really just... Making upgraded pick to the face hit for 6 to 15 plus block pen is really freaking good. That That is a lot of damage. So that's the best use of this trinket is to slam pick every turn. But in terms of other good trinkets for her, Raven's Reach is okay. Knuckles are okay if you're doing melee stuff. Uh, Buttressing Band for the crit is not bad. You have the Fetter Blight Trinkets, so the Galvanizing Goblet, the Kappa. Kappa's good on anyone because it just gives them random Blight, but it's not bad for her specifically. And then you have Corrupting Cleaver for Blight Piercing. This is probably the best one from the Fetter, just because having uh, Resistance Penetration is like accuracy in the first game. It's just really good to always have as much as you can. Brilliant Brew, extra Blight Duration. And the movement thing with disease doesn't matter to her. And even kitchen knives. So like all of these blight trinkets are really good for her. So if you're going to take her to the fetter, either you should replace her with bounty hunter. Or you should give her some way to deal with the high blight resistance there. So like pick to the face, throne dagger, lunge, pirouette, that stuff. But once you get through there and you get these trinkets, any of them are honestly really good for her. But otherwise... Murder Weapon, instant kill if it's not a boss on a crit. She can crit pretty well with a good setup, so it's not bad for her. Anything that gives extra turns, so Pocket Watch, Temptation, pretty much great on everybody. She's actually pretty good with Corrupted Bile Gland because she has a lot of ways to not get hit through dodge and stealth. Snap Judgment, she already starts with high speed, so she can get to that 12 cap really easily. Lockjaw for the extra Blight Piercing is nice. 
you're running a movement build, then the Forbidden Fidget Spinner, aka Jealous Whisper, is good. And I think the next good region one is probably parrying Patriarch out of the Sprawl. Because this way you don't have to upgrade Pirouette or... You, you still upgrade... No, you do upgrade Pirouette. I, I was thinking Repartee, but yeah. You upgrade Pirouette because you get the damage, but you don't have to upgrade Absinthe or Repartee because it just converts those dodges to dodge plus anyway. So that's really nice. And then actually, those eight speed or higher ones, because she starts at seven. So if you can get her one more speed, then like Snappy Swig is insane. Lightning Element can be good. And Smoldering Hymnal, she usually goes first unless, you know, Sharp Shot Dismiss is there. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that are good for her. But otherwise, you really want to focus on anything that gives her damage. Defense is nice and all, but really she's there to, to do damage. So usually your trinket should reflect that. Let's round out the video by talking about good teammates for Grave Robber. The first one is going to be Vestal. Vestal is pretty helpful for Audrey because the consecrations that she lays down when you move around, other people will pick them up on their turn. So if it starts on Grave Robber, who is likely going first in the turn order, she can lunge and hit something with a strength token. And then the person that moves onto it the turn after her, or during that round, I should say, will pick up the next token. So it's a really effective way to juggle buffs onto people. Not only that, you can guard Grave Robber if she gets into danger because she doesn't have a lot of HP. And having someone else to heal means that Grave Robber doesn't have to rely on her self-healing as much and can save it specifically for emergencies. The next really good character for Grave Robber is Jester. Jester is a really strong support unit, but also Jester doesn't mind getting moved around in the party because he's very mobile. And since Grave Robber is very mobile too, they, they can pretty much play off of each other and always have something to do depending on where they're at in the party. So while it can be difficult to build a very, very fluid dance team, they do work together pretty well. So even if the speed rolls don't go your way, if you make some mistakes, they're not completely screwed or, you know, out of options just because something went wrong. Plus, Jester puts out a ton of combo, which Audrey greatly appreciates. The final good character for Audrey is Highwayman. A lot of reasons similar to Jester minus the support stuff, but Highwayman usually has options to use in any rank, so he doesn't mind getting moved around. He's also pretty mobile himself, and the two of them together have a ton of reach. So as long as you're not running a specific melee build or something for either of them, the two of them can usually hit all four spots pretty easily with one or two skills. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. If there's any other tips and tricks and such that I missed, and any other teammates to pair with Audrey. I know a lot of people are going to say the Blight characters like PD and Flagellants, and they are very good with her if you're running a specific Blight team. However, what I would say is that if you want a super massive Blight team, for one, you have to go to the Fetter, where all three of them are going to be struggling. And then two, they're all going to be fighting over the Blight Trinkets because they're all good for all three of them. So it's not unusable, it's still a good team, but my main focus was trying to maximize Grave Robber in the team section. That's the end of the tangent, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.